Thank you, Ian. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. ABARES is projecting a fairly mixed outlook for the Australian dairy industry over the next five years. On the plus side, seasonal conditions have been very good over the past couple of years, resulting in a turnaround in milk production. One reason for the turnaround has been plenty of grass and fodder, helped by increased irrigation water availability. Another reason is lower feed grain costs, following two bumper winter grain harvests. Hopefully, the good autumn rains and further improved seasonal conditions over the coming year should help maintain irrigation water allocations and lead to further increases in milk production. And continued plentiful grain availability and relatively low grain prices should help constrain costs. On the other side of the coin, after rising for most of 2010-11, world prices for dairy products softened in 2011-12, although prices have stabilised in the last couple of months. The main reason for these lower prices has been weak demand in some of the major developed economies. Demand in the developing economies has remained relatively firm, and this has partially offset weaker demand in, those, in the developed economies. During the rest of my time today, I want to run through a few factors likely to influence milk prices over the next few years. So first of all, let's have a look at how we see things unfolding in the world dairy market. In terms of demand, in the short term, relatively good demand in the developing economies is forecast to be affected by a slowdown in economic growth in Western Europe and weak economic growth in the United States. But over the medium term to 2016-17, we're expecting economic growth in Western Europe to recover from no growth in 2012 to nearly 2% 2 in 2014 and beyond. In the United States, we're projecting economic growth to pick up from around 2% 2 in 2012 to nearly 3% 3 in 2014 and then settle back to around 2.5% from 2016. For the developing economies, economic growth is projected to remain above 6% over the next six years. Other important factors driving demand in developing economies in regions such as Asia, North Africa, the Middle East, and the Middle East will be rising per person incomes, population growth, and increasing consumption of Western foods particularly in Asian diets. The next two slides illustrate some of the recent growth trends in demand for dairy products. In the case of cheese, import demand has been very strong in countries such as Russia and South Korea since 2008. For some developed economies, import demand has been declining, although a slight pickup is expected in 2012. Of course, in the case of the European Union and the United States, much of their demand is met by their own increasing milk production, while in Japan, an ageing population has had some impact on overall growth. In the case of whole milk powder, imports by China rose dramatically from 2008. This increase has been driven by strong growth in domestic demand for dairy products and by consumer concerns about the safety of domestically produced products following the discovery of melamine in locally produced milk powders in 2008. Although Chinese demand is not expected to be as strong over the medium term as it has been in recent years, it is still expected to remain high. Algeria's import demand for whole milk powder has also been very good over the past few years and is expected to remain so in the coming years. Overall, whole milk powder demand in Algeria is expected to continue to outpace, outpace an expected increase from local production, which has been gaining increased government support of late. Import demand by other countries, though not as high as Algeria and China, is expected to make an important contribution to overall future demand, particularly from countries such as Chinese Taipei, Russia, the Philippines and Indonesia. Although demand for dairy price will continue to improve in the medium term, growth in world production is projected to outstrip growth in demand. For the major exporting countries, 
we're projecting milk production to continue to expand, although at a slower pace. For New Zealand, we're forecasting milk production to increase by around 2% in 2012, compared to 9% in 2011. After increasing by 13% in 2011, Argentina's production is forecast to grow by 4% in 2012. For the European Union and the United States, milk production is forecast to increase by 1% in 2012, following a 2% 2 rise in 2011. Now, it should be remembered, or kept in mind, that only a small proportion of milk is traded internationally, so small changes in either demand or supply can quickly impact on dairy product prices. In the short term, because of weak demand in Western Europe and the United States and rising milk production, world dairy prices are forecast to fall by between 1.5% and 5% in 2012-13. Over the medium term, Avares is projecting world prices to fall slowly in real terms as production growth is expected to outstrip demand growth. But prices are projected to average 20 to 30% higher than average prices received over the five years to 2006, seven. Now turning to what we see happening in Australia. As a result of a forecast decline in world prices and a high Australian exchange rate, which is assumed to average around 104 US cents this financial year, and around 103 US cents next financial year, ABARES is expecting average the average farm gate price to fall to 41 cents a litre in 2011-12 and to just under 40 cents a litre in 2012-13. Beyond 2012-13, we're projecting farm gate prices to continue to fall in real terms by, by around 6% to 36 cents a litre in 2016-17. Over this period, we're assuming the Australian dollar to fall slowly to average 95 US cents in 2016-17, and this fall will help support farm gate prices to some extent. With regard to milk production, we're assuming that seasonal conditions will be favourable over the next few years, and as a result, AVAIRS is projecting produ production to increase from 9.4 billion litres in 2011-12 to 10 billion litres in 2016-17. Before finishing, Chairman, I'd like to make a few comments relating to the supermarket milk price discounting. Since early 2011, major supermarket chains reduced their re the retail price of their home brand fresh milk to a dollar a litre, which is well below prices for branded milk. This strategy has been beneficial from the point of view that total milk sales for the 11 months to December 2011 were nearly 3% higher compared to the same period a year ago. This is nearly double the growth experienced during 2010 and is 1% more than the average annual growth in fresh milk sales over the five year period 2009-10. So surely that's good for farmers as well as for consumers. Now there's been media reports that negotiations between farmers and processors around northern New South Wales and Queensland, have, that these negotiations have resulted in lower farm gate prices and shorter contracts for the next few years. And the major supermarkets have been blamed for this. But there are a number of factors that may have led to lower prices for those producers. Let's not forget that since deregulation in, dairy, in the dairy industry in 2000, all farm gate prices are influenced by not only what happens on the domestic market, but also what happens in world markets through export returns for manufactured dairy product. Around 43% of Australian milk production is exported as dairy products and returns from exported product eventually flows through to all producers, some quicker than others. As can be seen in this graph, in 2002-03, the average farm gate price in Queensland and New South Wales, where a bigger proportion of their returns 
come from the domestic market milk industry remained at around 33 and a half cents a litre. But milk fell, mil the milk price fell in Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania, as these states are more reliant on manufactured dairy products and returns from dairy exports. In 2001 and 2, world prices fell and these falls translated more quickly into lower prices for those states. But when prices in Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania showed improved in 2003-04, as world prices picked up, farm gate prices in Queensland and New South Wales fell. A similar pattern occurred in 2008-09. Again, when the impact of lower world prices translated into lower farm gate prices for Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania, before influencing prices in New South Wales, Queensland in the following years. One explanation for the lag in price movements between states may be that contracts for supplying the fresh milk market all year round operate over a number of years. For example, there has been mention of contracts for up to five years. In the case of contracts for supplying milk mainly for manufacturing products, these may operate over a shorter time frame as these processes need to react more quickly to changes in world prices and exchange rate movements. Also, fresh milk processes, processes may have offered higher prices to maintain milk supplies through the drought years experienced prior to 2010, at a time when feed and fodder prices were quite high. Since we're expecting the average farm gate price in Australia to be lower over the next few years, because of lower world dairy product prices, it should be no surprise that pr milk prices in Queensland, New South Wales and Western Australia are also likely to fall. Fortunately, since the breaking of the drought a couple of years ago, feed and fodder prices have been much lower, especially for grain, following bumper winter ha grain harvests over the past two years. At present, there is an abundance of feed quality grain following the recent grain affected harvests. So this should help cushion falling milk prices to some extent. In conclusion, Chairman, ABARES is projecting a fairly mixed outlook for Australian dairy farmers over the next five years. We expect that it will take a couple of years before we see an improvement in world demand for dairy products. While demand in developing economies is holding up, demand in some of the major developed economies is not expected to show significant improvement until 2014 and beyond. In addition, we're projecting world milk production to continue to grow at a faster rate than demand over the next five years. As a result, world dairy prices in real terms are projected to fall over the next five years. This is expected to translate into lower farm gate prices for Australian dairy farmers, with prices projected to fall to around 36 cents a litre in real terms in 2016-17 but lower feed, fodder and water costs on the back of a couple of good seasons should help offset to some extent the projected fall in farm gate prices. And as such, farm cash incomes should remain relatively high. Thank you. <laughs>